Meanwhile, the speculation game has shifted from Wall Street to medical labs and experts around the world. The weekend saw ominous comments from Dr. Fauci uh, that the mutation could be more transmissible and might evade some protection of monoclonal antibodies. But the chairwoman of the South African Medical Association reported that cases there have been mild and wonder why we were, quote, all up in arms. Joining me now, Fox News medical contributor, Dr. Jeanette Neshwant. Uh, Dr. Jeanette, I is it too early to make the worst assumptions? Right now, obviously, the market is thinking that maybe it won't be as bad as some of the talking over the weekend. Yes, Charles, absolutely. It's too early to jump to conclusions. We have the tools this year that we didn't have last year to help fight this Omicron variant and all the other variants. It's just a matter of time. It could be days to maybe another week or two until we know exactly how this variant will behave. But we have the, uh, the, the vaccines. We have monoclonal antibodies. We have therapeutics. We have medications. We know how to treat this disease. The best thing we can do right now is not panic, but just be prepared. And by that, I mean Make sure you're vaccinated. Get your booster if you're eligible for a booster. And just use common sense precautions. Hand washing. Making sure you get tested if you were exposed. Making sure you're in an area that has good ventilation if you're in public. Those sorts of measures. Well, the Biden administration issued a travel ban uh, for flights out of South Africa. But, you know, I, I watched a fighter, a boxer, this weekend from South Africa fighting Madison Square Garden over the weekend. And I'm wondering, is it too late for those kind of travel bans? That, that's a great question. The key for effectiveness is early implementation. So if you're going to institute a travel ban, it has to be done early. Um, you know, the first case of this Omicron variant was actually identified November 9th. That was weeks ago. And we're just now putting on the travel ban today. So I think it might be a little bit too late. I think we need to focus our energy and our, and our efforts on testing, for right. example, getting a PCR test before you leave the country, getting a test when you arrive. That's one of the best ways to pick up um, the, the variant, especially because we know a lot of people could be asymptomatic. So I think testing, quarantining, contact tracing, that's where we really need to focus on top of vaccinating those in third wor world countries, poor countries that have such a low level of vaccination. Yeah, yeah, I mean, President Biden bragged on how much we've given versus the rest of the world, but I think we've got the most. And honestly, I don't know that the administration is living up to what they promised the rest of the world. But I want to get back to something you just kind of alluded to. I was reading where 85 percent of the population with immunity is considered herd immunity. I guess that's the magic number. What role does natural immunity play within that time frame and that frame and that number? That, that's a very good question. Natural immunity definitely can give you protection. You know, of all the patients that I've taken care of the past year and a half, the past two years, I haven't seen a lot of patients who've had a previous infection and then come back in and test positive. Maybe a handful. I have more patients that have breakthrough infections. So it definitely plays a role. But the question is durability. How strong and how long will it last? We, we have preliminary data that tells us if you get three doses of an mRNA vaccine, your protection skyrockets. Mm -hmm. The person that has the most uh, protection is someone, for example, that had uh, COVID, they've recovered, and then later on they go and get vaccinated. They have that natural immunity and vaccine immunity. Um, so we're all, we all can be protected. It's just a matter of getting the three doses, especially if you're eligible, because we have now more data that tells us what an increase in protection that you can have. Doc, I got less than a minute to go. I want to squeeze this in because the Delta variant has been surging around the world, particularly in places like Germany and the Netherlands. Why is that not a story anymore? It should be. What happens in other countries, Charles, affects us in the United States. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit disappointing that we haven't yet picked it up here in the United States. We need to really ramp up and improve our uh, what's called genomic surveillance and sequencing, which means picking up the virus. We can do that with PCR testing, for example. Um, but it's, what happens in other countries has a direct impact on us here mm -hmm. in the United States. We're only as strong as our weakest country, so it's important that we ensure global vaccination for everyone. Dr. Neshawat, it's always a fantastic uh, to see you, particularly uh, when we're kind of nervous about something. You always make us feel better. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Charles.